Hello, in this problem we're going to find the area using the limit definition. Our function is y equals 27 minus x cubed and we're going to find the area under the graph from 1 to 3. So to do that we're going to use a bunch of formulas, so solution. Let me show you um, what the integral would look like just for fun, just to show you it only takes a second. So to find the area here, this is the same thing as the integral of 27 minus x cubed dx, and we're going from 1 to 3. So you can use very simple formulas to come up with the answer, but this problem wants us to do it with the limit definition. So this is the formula we're going to use. This is going to give us the area. It's the limit as n approaches infinity of the finite sum as i runs from 1 to n of f of c sub i times delta x. So this is going to give us the area. So in this particular problem, the f of x is this right here. So our f of x is 27 minus x cubed. Okay, they call it y, but that's going to be our f of x. All right, and then so what is everything else? So delta x is going to be equal to b minus a over n, so we need that formula. I'll put it in a box, because that's something you'll need. And also c sub i, we're going to use this one. It's a plus i delta x. That's going to be our c sub i that we're going to use. Okay, And equipped with these things, we should be able to do this problem. So in this particular problem, A is 1 and B is 3. I should also mention that this problem is very messy and I haven't done it yet, so I'm going to do my best to not mess up. All right, it's very easy to mess up. So first we have to find delta x because you see it shows up here in the C sub i, so we can't find it without the delta x. That's pretty easy though, right? So delta x is B minus A, so it's 3 minus 1 over n. Super easy, so 2 over n. Good stuff. So delta x is 2 over n. Delta x is equal to 2 over n. That's good. C sub i is a plus i delta x. So a is 1, so it's 1 plus uh, i times delta x. So i times 2 over n. That's simply going to be C sub i equals 1 plus 2i over n. Okay, so we've got delta x, we've got c sub i, so now we somehow have to work this out. Let's first focus on finding this, f of c sub i. Once we have this, this is the hardest part, we'll plug it in and then work out the sum. So recall that f of x in this problem was 27 minus x cubed. So we want f of c sub i. That's the same thing as saying f of 1 plus 2i over n, which is equal to 27 minus parentheses 1 plus 2i over n cubed. Okay, so now we have to work this out, which is a bit of a, of a mess uh, in some sense. So you could just multiply it out. I'm going to take another approach. Recall the very powerful triangle of Blaise. Blaise's triangle. Actually, it's Pascal. His first name was Blaise. I think it's, I think it's how you say it. <laughs> Pascal's triangle or Blaise's triangle. So you write a 1, and then you put 1s in the sides. 1 plus 1 is 2. And you put 1s in the sides. 1 plus 2 is 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. And you put 1s in the sides. This is row 0. This is row 1, this is row 2, this is row 3. You start counting at 0. Again, 1, 1, 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, and then 1's on the sides. 1 plus 2 is 3, uh, 2 plus 1 is 3, you put 1's on the sides. I stop here because there's a 3 here. These are the coefficients, okay? And so this tells you um, a formula for this. So basically the formula, uh, it's a cubed plus 3, so it's 1a cubed, 3, and then the a goes down in exponents. So it's a squared, and the b goes up. So b to the 1, 
plus 3a, b squared plus b cubed. So the a's decrease in power, 3, 2, 1, 0. The b's increase in power, b to the 0, it's not there, b to the 1, b to the 2, b to the 3. Very powerful, worth memorizing. Again, 3, 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 2, 3. So now we're going to apply it to this. So this is equal to 27 minus parentheses. So a cubed, a is 1. So it's 1. All right, so here a is 1, b is 2i over n. And then it's plus 3a squared b. So it's plus 3a squared is 1, so I won't write it. b is 2i over n plus 3, a is 1, b squared is going to be this squared here, so it'll be 4i squared over n squared. And the last one is b cubed, so plus 8i cubed n cubed. Right, so very powerful technique, and I actually have 1, 3, 3, 1 memorized, and I have this memorized already, so it's not hard for me, but if you don't know this, it's tough because you have to know the triangle. I'm going to do the triangle one more time over here. 1, 1, 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, 1, 1, 1 plus 2 is 3, 2 plus 1 is 3, 1, 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. Those are your coefficients. You start with 1, and then it's a cubed, and then b to the 0, so you don't write it, plus a squared, plus 3, a squared, b to the 1, plus 3ab squared, plus b cubed. So notice it, the exponents go down on the a, 3, 2, 1, 0. They go up on the b, 0, 1, 2, 3. The coefficients are 1, 3, 3, uh, 1. Let me go ahead and delete all of this and get it out of the way so we don't have it here anymore. But same deal. So this is equal to 27 minus 1. Right, we'll distribute the minus 1 here. Uh, 6i over n, so minus 6i over n. Uh, minus 3 times 4 is 12, so 12i squared over n squared, and then minus uh, 8i cubed over n cubed. Ridiculous, right? Ridiculous. A little bit of simplification here. We can subtract the 27 and the 1. So this is equal to 26 minus uh, 6i over n minus 12i squared over n squared minus 8i cubed over n cubed. All right, so all of this is what? This was f of c sub i, right, f of c sub i. And let's go ahead and write down, what else do we need? We need our delta x, that was 2 over n, that was from before. And so now let's go ahead and write down the formula for the area. So our area, which I wrote down the formula earlier, I wrote it as an integral. Um, is equal to the limit as n approaches infinity of the finite sum. I usually write the limit at the end, but I'll, I'll write it here so you see it all together. Because this problem is so messy that I feel like I don't want to get derailed from the main idea. It's f of c sub i times delta x. Okay, That was our formula. And so we've worked out f of c sub i. Okay. We've worked out delta x. So now what we're going to do is we're going to just focus on the sum, okay? And then at the very, very end, we'll come back and take the limit. So I'm going to write the sum down by itself. So the sum, as i runs from 1 to n. Okay, f of c sub, c sub i, we worked it out. So I'm going to write it out. It's 26 minus 6i over n minus... 12i squared over n squared minus 8i cubed over n cubed and then times delta x, which is 2 over n. Very messy problem. This is probably one of the messiest ones found in most textbooks that are used to teach calculus, at least in the U.S. Um, uh, I decided I should do a, a really messy one. <laughs> so... So now what we're going to do is I'm going to use some super powerful math. Basically, we're going to break this up into four sums, and we're going to do it all in one step. It'll save us years in our life. So watch this. If it doesn't have an i, you pull it out. So watch this. 2 over n times 26, right? You multiply that. 
uh, 2 times 26 is 52. So it's 52 over n, and then we're pulling it out, and it's going to leave us with a 1. Then minus 2 over n times this, that's going to be 12. And then n times n is n squared, and then we have the sum of the i's. Really beautiful. Really cool. 2 times negative 12 is negative 24. This is just how I do it. I don't know how other people do it. n times n squared is n cubed. And then here we have the sum. It's just so much cleaner to do it like this because you can spend hours, not hours, but you can spend a long time, you know, writing this a million times. It's a lot of summation symbols. You want to make it as easy as possible for yourself. And then this times this will be 16. So minus 16 n to the fourth, right? Because n times n cubed is n to the fourth, and we're left with the i cubes. i cubed. i cubed. Beautiful. So we've basically worked out the sum, so all we have to do now is take the limit, but we still have these sums here, so let's go ahead and apply the formulas. And this is like the ultimate problem because it requires all the formulas that are typically found in the calculus book. <laughs> so every single formula is used. So this is 52 over n. So this one here, this is just going to be n because you're just adding 1 to itself over and over n times. So n minus 12 over n squared. This one here is a very popular formula. It's n, n plus 1 over 2 minus 24 over n cubed. This one is n n plus 1, 2n plus 1 over 6. This is the worst one. I always had a really hard time with this one. And then minus 16 over n to the fourth. This one's n squared, n plus 1 squared over 4. I actually just proved this um, two days ago. I did an induction proof on this to show that this is equal to this. You can prove these formulas, by the way, um, using uh, the principle of mathematical induction. I've, I've done all of these. And um, yeah, there's actually one for a four here, but then it gets really messy there. So that's typically not found in most books because it just gets a little bit out of control. It's kind of like the cubic formula. It's just a little bit crazy. So now we just have to take the limits. So um, I guess I can write the limit sign here and cheat. Um, so let me do that. So let me just say then. <laughs> so like a, a transitory, is that the right word? I don't know. Limit as n goes to infinity. Now we're going to add the limit, and now we'll take the limit. So this is just going to be 52. What about here? So what we're going to do is we're going to focus on leading coefficients. So in the numerator, so the term of highest degree is 12n squared. In the denominator, it's 2n squared. Whenever the degrees match and you're taking a limit as n goes to infinity, the answer is always the ratio of the leading coefficients, and that's because the growth rate is the same, and all the other terms of smaller degree are, are, are inconsequential because n is growing without bounds, so we only care about the higher order terms. So it'll be 12 over 2, which is 6, but I'll leave it as 12 over 2. Oh, oh, it's not plus. Look at that. Minus 12 over 2. Minus... Here it's 24 n, 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 so it's n, 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 so n cubed, but it's 24 times 2, so it's 48 n cubed, and on the bottom it's 6 n cubed, so it's 48 over 8, right, because 2 times 24 is 48, you got to be really careful there, very commonplace uh, that people mess up, and then minus, this is going to be 16, this is also squared, so 16 n to the 4th over 4 n to the 4th. So it'll just be uh, 16 over 4, because the degrees are the same. So let's see what this is going to be. This is 52 minus 6 minus um, 6, right? 6 times 8 is 48 minus 4. Not mess up here. <laughs> That'd be really bad. This is equal to 52. Oh, let's see. Uh, negative minus 16 minus 16. I think I think this is 34. Yeah, it's 34. Right, 34, or no, is it 34? No, it's not 34. Uh, oh, brain, brain, brain death. 52 minus 16, old school. 12, borrow 
uh, a 10. 12 times 6 is 6. 36. Yeah, 36. That's better. 36 is the answer. Wow. You get to the very end of this problem and you forget how to uh, how to subtract numbers. But I feel like, I feel like there's a mistake somewhere. Um, I don't think that this is 100% correct. So 52. Ah, this is, there's a 6 here. This is a 6. And so this is an 8. I, feel, I knew something was off. So I, I made a little mistake here. So this is 48 over 6. Let me use a different color here. I'm glad I caught that. So this is 48 over 6. So this is going to become an 8. So it'll be 52 minus 6 minus 8 minus 4. So it'll be uh, 52 uh, minus, uh, let's see, minus 18. Minus 18. So that's going to be 34. Okay, 34 should be the final answer in this problem. Wow, really easy uh, to, to mess up. So uh, be very, very careful with problems like that. You saw how I messed up there. I put an eight here instead of a six. So I'm glad I caught it. And 34, uh, let me see, let me just check here. 34 is actually the correct answer. So it is 100% correct. So be really careful. Uh, you see how easy it is uh, to mess up in these problems. In any case, I hope this video has been helpful to you, and it's a long problem, right? Like, there's no easy way, and I'm kind of glad I messed up at the end just to show you <laughs> how easy it is. Uh, the most common mistake, though, is the multiplication here between the 24 and the 2. That's the most common mistake. Like, if people make it this far, that's typically uh, where they mess up. And I guess sometimes people, like me, will write the wrong number down, so that's also a way to mess up. I hope this has been helpful to you. Good luck.